Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to use Space Engine to go on an adventure and to look for other Earth-like planets that we have discovered as of 2017. Welcome to What The Math. So in the past uh, decade or so, the astronomers were actually very, very productive in discovering quite a lot of exoplanets. We've currently discovered close to about 4,000, and quite a few of them are Earth-like. But today we're going to take a look at at least eight systems where we actually have a very, very positive identification of very Earth-like planets. In other words, planets that are either terrestrial or are Earth-like in mass and are located in the habitable zone where there might be water. Anyway, let's actually escape our solar system and go to the first one that you may have never heard of before. This is going to be a system known as Kepler-438b. Alright, so let's jump into that system. And here it is, Kepler-438b, a scorched desert as it's known in Space Engine, orbiting around its parent star, a red dwarf. Now, this particular planet is Earth-like in terms of mass and in terms of size, and does seem to have Earth-like appearance, but we're not entirely sure if there's actually any liquid water here, or if it actually can support life, and for one single reason. Its star is known as a flare star. It's, it's a red dwarf that's very, very active and produces quite a lot of various flares. In other words, it's possible that that star may have actually stripped all of the atmosphere and all of the water from Kepler-438b, unless, of course, this particular planet has very strong, very powerful magnetic field. If it does, then maybe, just maybe, it may have um, water, it may also have atmosphere and so on. But otherwise, it's going to be very barren and very empty. Possibly full of volcanoes like this one. And so, this is the first Kepler um, system we're going to visit. But Kepler is a telescope that's been very productive in fighting exoplanets. So let's look at another one. This time at the most famous of Kepler exoplanets that's Earth-like, Kepler-22b. And here it comes any second now. Now this is actually the first uh, discovered Earth-like planet in the habitable zone. And in Space Engine, it is absolutely gorgeous. It has rings, it has very beautiful atmosphere, and it actually orbits in a very nice location around its parent star. So there is our beautiful Kepler-22b, known as Hot Oceania, because the temperature here is currently 150 degrees Celsius, but it does have liquid ocean on the surface. What's interesting about this particular planet is that it has a very similar orbit to our planet Earth. It takes about 290 days to orbit around its parent star, and it's located in the habitable zone, meaning that liquid ocean is a possibility here. It also may actually have a magnetic field because its mass and its size is comparable to our planet Earth, um, although its actual radius is about 2 uh, or 2.4 radii of Earth. But um, based on its location, we can estimate that the average temperature here is probably about 20-ish degrees um, Celsius. So maybe a little bit warmer than Earth, but it all depends on the atmosphere that it actually has. So if it does have really thick atmosphere like Venus, then maybe it's a lot hotter. If it has very thin atmosphere like Mars, then maybe, just maybe, it's going to be a lot cooler. And in Space Engine, the surface of this planet is covered entirely in liquid water. But I guess boiling liquid water because it's actually kind of hot here right now. But the thing is, since this uh, planet is kind of far from us, it's about 600 light years away, it's kind of difficult to study. It's very, very difficult to see what else this planet has. So it might be a while before we know more about it. For now, we can use Space Engine to basically enjoy this beautiful ring formation around it and imagine what it may look like. Let's go to the next Kepler planet. This is Kepler-186f. Now, this Kepler system has quite a lot of planets around it, but it's this one in particular that's of interest to us. Kepler-186f is very likely a very, very terrestrial uh, planet. 
It's about 500 light years away from us, so it's once again hard to study it. Uh, but its mass is very close to mass of Earth, only about maybe 10% more massive than our planet Earth. And um, its year is about 130 days, so maybe a third of a year on Earth. But it's also in a habitable zone because its star, its, uh, its parent star, is a lot uh, less massive than our sun. Now, this actually looks very beautiful. Look at this huge mountain here. It's like Everest that actually used to be a volcano. And it seems to be sticking out of the atmosphere here. All right, so this uh, planet is in a very unusual system where we've discovered quite a lot of planets. And um, this particular object actually has a very high chance of being a rocky planet, very similar to Earth. And it, because of its location, we think that... Um, Unless it really has no magnetosphere, it's probably going to have some atmosphere and some liquid water. In this game, though, it's a little bit chilly here. It's actually minus 92 degrees Celsius, which is why everything here is ice. But uh, in reality, it might be actually a lot warmer than that, especially if it does have atmosphere. And on top of that, there's quite a lot of other planets to choose from. At least four more, as a matter of fact, and all of them seem to be relatively interesting. But this one specifically, in Space Engine at least, seems to actually have a relatively nice climate. Okay, maybe not so nice. It's, it says it's 53, 54 degrees um, on average, which means that only the darker side of this Kepler 186e is going to be acceptable for human life to exist, but... It does look pretty cool, though. It's a very nice-looking warm terra that we're going to go ahead and land on and see what its surface looks like. And here we go, entering the atmosphere, going through the layers of atmosphere, and look at that. Very, very beautiful. In reality, though, this planet actually might be a lot hotter than it is in this game, so it's very likely that there is really no liquid water here whatsoever. It might be actually similar to planets like Mercury. Anyway... So that's it for the Kepler planets. Let's uh, look at other discoveries from other telescopes, starting with the binary system discovered by OGLE telescope. And the only one we're actually going to take a look at is this one right here with a very unusual name, OGLE uh, 2013, because it was discovered in 2013, BLG 341LB. This is also a ringed planet. Very, very nice looking ringed planet, as a matter of fact. Um, and what's really cool about it is that it's actually located in a binary system. Now, unfortunately, Space Engine doesn't uh, present this particular system as binary, so there's actually only one star. But in reality, though, oh, but it does have this very beautiful uh, nebula behind it, which is absolutely gorgeous. But yes, in reality, this is actually a binary system, and this particular planet orbits at a distance of about, well, about astro one astronomical unit, very similar to our planet Earth. But it orbits two stars, not one, and because its two stars are a lot colder uh, on average, it's very likely that this is actually a frozen world. It's very, very likely that uh, this particular planet has really cold temperatures. So maybe there's a lot of ice here. Maybe there's actually a lot of um, various ice formations and possibly even, um, if there is atmosphere, possibly even a liquid cycle similar to that on Titan. But the de there's definitely no liquid water here. It's outside of the habitable zone, but it is a terrestrial planet in a very unusual binary system. And the reason why this is exciting is because this actually gives us an idea that um, essentially planets like Tatooine from Star Wars with two stars are a possibility. Those terrestrial planets that have binary systems uh, or inside binary systems are a reality. And OGLE 2013 BLG 341LB is sort of a, a good example that out there in our galaxy, there's quite a lot of very unusual terrestrial planets. This is probably not a system we'll be visiting anytime soon because it's actually 3,000 light years away from us, very, very far away. So instead, we're going to go to the next one, known as Glias 667C. And this one is a lot closer, at only 24, uh, 24 light years away from our own Earth. And similar to Kepler 22b, this particular planet is also very likely terrestrial and very likely similar to Earth. It is more massive though, it's actually four times as massive as our planet Earth, and its radius is about 1.5 times bigger, but it's, you know, high in density and very likely has strong magnetosphere, and look at that, even active volcanoes. Possibly. We're not sure, but maybe. 
It's very likely that there's also atmosphere here. It's also very possible that um, there's going to be some sort of um, geological activity. And for these reasons, it's possible that this might be a very, very Earth-like planet. More massive, more gravity, but as long as there's magnetosphere, it will have atmosphere and possibly even the liquid water. Now, interestingly, if I actually enable the orbit and zoom out of this particular system, which you'll see in a second, um, you'll notice that there's something unusual going on with the orbits, and that's because this is not a single star. This is actually not even a binary star. It is a star that has two other companions. So there are those other two companions known as Glia 667b, which is an orange dwarf um, similar to our own sun, and Glia 667a, once again an orange dwarf. This particular star, though, where um, the terrestrial planet is found, is a red dwarf. Um, so, all in all, this is a pretty interesting system where there's actually three different stars that you can see in, in your sky. And sometimes this means that this particular planet might actually get a little bit too toasty, possibly a little bit too hot, at least on some sites and in some uh, particular months of the year. But all in all though, this is a pretty cool system and it's only 27 light years away from us, which means that maybe one day we'll be able to visit it. Next on the list is even closer to us at 14 light years and this is a planet known as Wolf 1061c, discovered by the Wolf Telescope. And once again, this is actually, um, in this particular game, an ocean world. It's a cool Oceania with a very comfortable minus 48 degrees celsius basically it's a little bit too chilly in reality though this is actually in the habitable zone it's a little bit larger than earth um, at maybe about four times the radius and it's actually possibly very possibly what's known as a gas dwarf not really a terrestrial planet uh, but we're not really sure it might be a terrestrial planet with just very very large atmosphere but it is, however, in a habitable zone, so if it is some sort of a gas giant or uh, not a gas giant, but a gas dwarf, it might actually have um, a lot of liquid present on it. Possibly even uh, liquid oceans of something, of stuff, hopefully water. But it does also have two um, rocky neighbors, very similar to Mars and um, Venus, and we can actually see them in the game right here there's one right here it's a cool desert and there's one right here which is a warm desert and this is sort of uh, the object we're looking at right in the middle of them so let's actually take a look at this particular object as well because it's a little bit closer to the parent star one problem however though with this particular system is that because um wolf 1061 is actually a red dwarf it's possible that all of these objects are tidally locked and for this reason, it's, it means that there's, possibility, there's a possibility that uh, one side of this planet will always be hot, one side will be always cold, and only the twilight area right here in between them will actually have a normal climate with possibly liquid water. On the other hand, since this is actually a red dwarf, it's also more active than our sun, and so these planets would have to have really powerful magnetic field to protect their atmosphere and any water that's left on them. Speaking of red dwarfs, let's visit the two most famous ones. Starting with the recently discovered and super famous TRAPPIST-1 system. A system discovered in February of 2017 with not one, not two, not three, not four, but seven planets that are Earth-like. Three of these planets are in the habitable zone and have a very high chance of um, actually having liquid water and possibly even um, life, maybe? I don't know. It's possible, right? There's a seven, one in seven chance that at least one of these will have some something interesting on them. On the other hand, um, because this is once again a red dwarf, these planets would have to have very, very powerful magnetic field to be able to protect any kind of um, any kind of liquid water that you kind of see here, and any kind of um, life and atmosphere that might be present here. But I've talked about Trappist so much that you can actually check out more about it in one of the videos I posted previously. So we're going to move on to the last terrestrial object, the closest to us, the most exciting that we might actually have a chance to visit in the next few decades, Proxima Centauri. Now Proxima Centauri is the closest star to us, it's only about 4.2 light years away. 
and it does have at least one terrestrial planet. Unfortunately, that planet is not present in Space Engine, but what we do have in Space Engine um, around Proxima Centauri is a world that has life on it. Now, this is actually randomly generated, so it's very interesting that uh, this particular game was able to randomly generate a planet with life um, in the object closest to our planet Earth. And this is what this particular planet looks like. And we're going to imagine that this is actually Proxima b. Proxima b is a terrestrial planet, very close um, to us. It's located in the habitable zone. It has a very high chance of having both uh, liquid water and atmosphere, as long as, once again, it has strong magnetosphere. And if it does, it might even have life on it. One day, we'll hopefully visit it. There's actually at least one mission that's being planned by um, several people, including Stephen Hawking and several billionaires that are going to give him the money to do all of this. And hopefully this mission will find out what is present on this planet. But as you can see, there's some green stuff going on here. And that's, of course, the life that exists on this planet in this particular game. And there it is. The exotic multicellular life of Proxima B in Space Engine. Now, hopefully, in the next few decades, we'll actually get to uh, find out more about this particular planet because this is probably the best chance we have for finding an Earth-like planet outside of our solar system and possibly might be the first planet we'll officially uh, colonize sometime in the next 100 years. Whether this happens or not will be all up to the science and, of course, the humanity itself. Hopefully we don't destroy each other and hopefully we'll get a chance to visit this planet and maybe even settle on it. But for now though, we can only imagine these things using Space Engine. We can visit them in the in this free video game that you should totally download if you still haven't. And if not, just come back to this channel because I'll be doing this for you. Anyway, subscribe if you still haven't. And if you've enjoyed this video, share this with someone who enjoys watching space videos, science videos and wants to learn through video games. I'll see you guys tomorrow, where you're going to learn something else, something different, something that you may have not known before. Anyway, see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.